so now another construction of sheaf is uh, what is called so this um, sheaf hai, uh, it has some functorial properties so she push forward and pull back and inverse image of a sheaf <coughs> oh. so Suppose AF is a map from X to Y, topological space, topological space, map of topological space, X, Y are map of X, Y are topological space. So, what is AF lower star? So, this is the called push forward. So, how do you define F lower star? So, so push and suppose F G are sheaves on <coughs> X and Y respectively. Now, you define F lower star of F. F lower star, so F is a sheaf on X and you want to define a sheaf on Y. So, this is all push forward. So, f lower star of our f of u, where u is open subset, you define it uh, to be f of f inverse u. f is a continuous map, f is a map of topological space, that means it is a continuous <coughs> map. So, f inverse u is a open subset. So, f of f inverse u makes <coughs> sense. Now, show that this is a shift. F star is defined uh, from G to F. Hmm? F star is defined uh, from G F to F. Lower star. Ah, F lower star. F lower star is a functor if you understand in the functorial language, it's a map from sheaf of X to sheaf of Y. So if F is a sheaf on X, you define F lower star of F is a sheaf on Y. And for every open subset U, so I have to define what is a I have to assign for every open subset, how do you define your abelian group and you define it to be like this. So, show that this is a sheaf. This is a sheaf on x, sheaf on, on y. So, obvious restriction maps. You have to define restriction map and then you uh, have to show that this is a sheaf, this satisfies a sheaf property. At uh, shift condition. So, yeah, I leave it as exercise, I will not do all this. Hmm. And there is another way, interesting uh, operation which is called inverse map or uh, it is called uh, inverse image. So, it is sometimes denoted by F inverse. It is called inverse image of. So, so if you, you take the shift G. Now, I define f inverse of g this is a sheaf on x. Hmm. So, this is a file, this is a map from sheaf of on y to sheaf of on y, sheaf of on, on x. So, f inverse g you define to be f in, so for every open subset u in x, I have to define it, right. So, f inverse of g u, here u was an open subset in y. Now, here u is an open subset in uh, in x. So, f inverse of g e u is uh, again direct limit construction f of u of v g of v. So, what is it? So, so here also if you take v 1 and v 2, if If you want, then you have a natural map from G V2 to G V1, right? The restriction map, obvious restriction map. That is a, instead of point, you take an image of an open subset. So in the case of stock, you are taking a point. Here you are taking, instead of point, you take an image of an open subset. And that is, that will form a direct system again. 
and take the direct limit. Again, like in the stock, uh, it, it may not be a sheaf now. You want the sheaf, right? So it may not satisfy those uh, good conditions, the sheaf condition, but you sheafify it. So in general, this may not be a sheaf. In general, this is a pre sheaf. <coughs> But you shifify it and call it inversive and call it f inverse of g. So this is called pullback, uh, sorry, inverse image of a shift. So these two constructions, this lower star, f lower star, the push forward and inverse image. These two constructions are like a adjoint. So, what does it mean? Uh, it means that, uh, okay, so I am not going into very detail of this construction, okay, I just, because I need this, uh, that's why I am going, I am introducing. So, for more, more, uh, you look at the book, Hartshorn book, or it has you can because the definition is little to to to, to make it a um, so to uh, you understand it better. You need to do some. I will do some examples, but you also look at the book and uh, see more examples and. Uh, <coughs> but uh, but I need these two cons uh, these two constructions so that otherwise I cannot do anything. Mm, so, so example. Okay, let me do one, at least one example before that. I will go into uh, further. So, example is that. So, for example, when u is so obvious thing x to y map. So, when you have u is open subset, and you take the obvious uh, map that you call it inclusion. Then what uh, if you have a sheaf? A, f is a sheaf on X. Sometimes I write it like this. F is a sheaf on this. Then I inverse of F. Hmm. So I inverse of F. Now this is sheaf on U. So on so U prime is equal to is f of u prime when so i inverse of f is a sheaf on u so for every open subset of u i have to associate something so what is i inverse of f of u prime it is f of u prime because u prime is open in u u is open in f so u prime is open in f so so I inverse of f u prime is f of u prime, where where u prime is a open subset of u. So this is this is a very useful. This is called restriction. So you you have a sheaf f on the on a topological space. U is an open subset. So you can call so this is called restriction of f on u. And sometimes this i this i inverse of f. Sometimes is denoted as f restricted on u when u is open subset. Yeah, you don't need to shifty Yes, here in this case you don't need to shifty because you are already on an open subset. But it, so whenever you, I define i inverse f, if you uh, that one point that if you have, if you have a shift, if you shiftify it, you get the shift original shift itself. You don't get because of the universal property, because you have the identity map f to f, and you define this shifty f plus. So then f plus should be identity with f because that map is a, because of the universal property. So shiftification of the shift is shift itself. <clears throat> okay. So this is one example. Another important example, so in, in important example is this. Uh, instead of u open, you could have taken a point, which is a close, suppose close point in a topological space. So suppose you, so you take a point P. Or P 
e belongs to x. Now, of course, then again, you have a map from i from your point to x. This point may be a closed point. This may not be may not be a closed point because point need not be closed always, right? We have seen example in space A. For example, if you take a prime ideal, there is not a closed point. If it is not a maximal ideal, <clears throat> right? So, but you can talk about this. Uh, if you take this shift f on x, then talk about i inverse of f, and i inverse of f is nothing but the stock of f at p. Because for there is only one open subset which is p itself. So then it define i inverse of f at the because here if you see the definition of direct limit is something like f of u prime. So so p contains in u prime, right? f of u is i of u is p. But this is exactly the same definition of the stock, right? So i inverse of f at a point p is nothing but the stock of <laughs> f at p. Okay. <clears throat> and also you have this uh, like I said that uh, uh, f upper f lower star you can think so uh, think as a map from sheaf of x to sheaf of on y and f uh, inverse is a map from sheaf of y to sheaf of x. And this is functorial. Functorial in the sense that if you have a map from f to g, and this is in sheaf of x, then f lower uh, suppose this is called g, then f lower star of g is a map from f lower star of f to f lower star of g. It's called functoriality property. So whenever you have map, so it's it's not only the it takes sheaf of x to sheaf of y. It takes morphism to morphisms. So that's why. So then, so this is a functor. What is a functor? It's a map from category to one other category. So object, you take the object that you define if lower star f. And if you have a map morphism between sheaves, it takes the morphism between the corresponding objects. Similarly, for uh, and of course, it satisfies uh, this this property that uh, if you have another map h then f lower star of h composition g is same as f lower star of h composition f lower star of g right so similarly for f upper streak <coughs> okay so these are all functors. So the, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a categorical language, it called they are, these are functors. These are functors. And these two functors are related in some sense. And that is the adjoint property. So and before the adjoint property, I should say, mention one more uh, remark that uh, there are natural maps. There exist natural maps um, So if you take a sheaf f on x look at the pu push forward and then you take the inverse image that's a sheaf on x and you have started with originally a sheaf on a, a x so there is there any relation? So the point is that yes, there is a there, there are natural maps alpha from f inverse f lower star of f to f, where f is on f is a sheaf on x. Similarly, there is a map uh, the, the, for the uh, for pull by it is in the other direction. None of them is injective surjective. Okay, this depends on the K map f. So in general, you cannot say that these are injective or subjective or there is a map. 
So by case by case, you will analyze these maps. But this is a uh, natural maps. That means naturally you can define uh, these maps. Canonically you can define. That is the important thing. That G two now G is a sheaf on Y. So you take the uh, inverse image, and then you take take the push forward. In some sense, most of them they, this is a this is a injective case in nice cases, nice topological space. So you this is kind of enlarging your G. And this is like contracting your F. So you will need whenever you have some you work with some sheet, you have to adjust something according to your. They won't be natural isomorphisms. No, no, no. I'm not saying anything. Those things, but these are natural maps of sheets. The alpha will be always injective. I'm not saying you know, case by case one has to analyze what is it, but there are natural maps, and the, I leave there is a so first you. Take this, and uh, then you when it is injective, when it is subjective, try it. Is it is it injective? I put a question now. Find examples when it is injective, when it is, <coughs> or are they? There are two maps, so I will write. But these alpha betas are important to give the adjoint uh, the so, so to see if you have f and g on x and y respectively. So you can talk about hom f inverse of g and f and hom f lower star of f and g. If I take a shift f on x, g on y, I can talk about f inverse g, which is a shift on x. An f lower star of f, which is a sheaf on y. So this is on sheaf uh, x, and this is on sheaf on y. The point is that they are isomorphic. This is a uh, this is something no, no, something non-trivial is happening. So that's why this is the uh, by end product actually. After all these things, we want this, and this is like a. They are related. These are called adjointness property. Whenever you have a functor f and g, one from uh, one category to the other one with the opposite, so you call they are adjoined to each other if they satisfy this property. This is a category in the categorical language. So this is proposition, and the map is given by so this way. Map is given by if you take something phi, you take a lower star of phi <coughs> composition beta. Beta is a map from so phi is a map from f inverse g to f. So then, if you put a lower star, if you will get map from f lower star of f inverse f g to uh, f lower star of f. And beta is a beta is a map from G to F lower star of F inverse G. Sorry, I have written something wrong here. It should be G to hmm. so if I take G beta, beta is a map from G to F lower star of F inverse G. And now, f lower star of phi is a map from f lower star of f inverse g to f in f, f lower star of f. So you you end up in g here. Is it clear? If you write down the maps, where is it? So phi is a map from f inverse. So what is f lower star of phi? f lower star of phi is a map from f lower star of f inverse g to f lower star of f. <coughs> And uh, and beta is a map from G to F lower star of F inverse G. So now, if you compose beta composition F lower star of 
a floor star of phi composed beta, then it will be a map from G to a floor star of phi. And that is what it is. Right. Now the opposite, so in this direction, this is uh, you take psi, this will be alpha composition f inverse of psi. Just check that this will be one. And now this will be inverse to each other. Right. And prove that this is a this is inverse to each other. So this is the isomorphism of groups, right? Uh, I mean, these are after all sheaf of abelian groups. So these are uh, these are uh, these are isomorphism of groups. Isomorphism of abelian. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll stop here. I'll continue. I'll I need some more uh, some more de definitions like what is called kernel, what is called uh, yeah. See, all these definitions can be made, I mean, if I do categorically, category theoretically, it will be more compact and it will look very nice. But uh, I am not doing any uh, category theory here. But one can all make, you can make it, you can, uh, all these things you can say in terms of categories. But objects are more general, not sheep of abelian groups and. Okay, so I need maybe one more lecture or half a lecture to complete what I want to say about the sheep theory. So the point is that ultimately whatever all this all these things. Okay, so now I want I what I want to say that I have some models. Like in the first class I said that I have this affine variety which are my models, and on this affine variety you have some sheep of uh, abelian groups which are regular functions, and now. Point is that if I have a topological space, if x is union of xi, and on each, if each xi you, have, you can associate a sheep fi, then and of course this fi there should be some <coughs> condition that if I take fi rest, so fi restricted to xi intersection xj is the inverse image. Xi intersection xj is a sub of xi, so you can talk about the inverse image of the sheep fi. That you call fi restricted to this, and similarly fj you restricted to xi intersection xj, and if there is a, some isomorphism, call it phi of ij, and it should satisfy some compatibility condition that if you further restrict, these are co-cycle condition that phi ij composition phi j k. So these are called co-cycle condition. This co-cycle if they satisfy this co-cycle condition, this fi, then one what the point is the punchline is that. I can construct a sheaf on x such that this f restricted to xi is my fi. So in some sense that you have a big topological space and locally you know they are and if they satisfy some gluing property. So these are the, these are the gluing property. Uh, this, uh, this is the gluing property, the co-cycle condition. Then you are in some sense these are all descent datas sometimes. So, so these, uh, sorry, these hmm. FIs are a set of regular functions. I mean these are some sheaf. I mean abstractly you can construct a sheaf. Now in the case of this, these are speck of AI or, or some uh, affine <coughs> varieties. Affine variety and FIs are regular functions. And this X is the gluing of this. So locally everything looks like affine varieties, but globally it is not. One example will be projective varieties. <coughs> and these are structure sheaves. So these are OXI. I mean, if XI is affine, these are structure sheaves. And you can more generalize more in the way if you study more uh, study sheaves on A or vector bundles or whatever, then you can take talk about sheaf of OX modules. You consider the sheaf AOX, which is a K algebra. Now you can talk about OX modules, sheaf of OX modules and uh, coherent sheaves on X. So these are more generalized objects. But to define uh, the variety of schemes, you don't need uh, sheaf of OX modules.
So this is the final M. And I will not do sheaf theory. I can continue doing it, but I will not. I will stop at some place, and then I will come back to the. Because to define abstractly, you need this. Uh, otherwise, I cannot uh, explain what it is. Okay, I will stop here.